Hey everybody, and welcome to Run Tall. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39. Nike has made a few changes over last year's version of the shoe, including a completely redesigned upper, and they added an air unit in the midsole. But did these changes make the shoe better or worse? Does it still run like a Pegasus? And would I spend my money to purchase these again? Well, those are the questions that we're going to try to answer today, so be sure to stick around. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you, so let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm going to take a real close look at the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Run Tall family. I'm really glad you're here and you found us on YouTube. Now, I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles weekly. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos about running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Now, these shoes retail for $130 US dollars. I did purchase them with my own money. Now, they are a neutral road shoe that I ordered true to size, and I'm glad that I did because the fit is spot on for me but we'll talk more about that when we get to the to the upper now they did lose a little bit of weight over last year's version of the shoe for us men's size nine which is what i wear on my scales they came in at nine ounces and for the rest of the world i'll put the grams up on the screen for you as well so let's start we'll talk about the midsole first uh you know they're a real pleasure to run in it's got a very natural feeling to them, and that's because they still feature their React foam, basically from the heel to the toe. And then within that React foam, they have two air units, one up in the forefoot and one in the heel. Now, the one in the heel is new for this year. And the stack height, I'd say it's moderate. Now, I can't get, I can't seem to find a consensus on the actual stack height of the midsole material, but to the, what I can Best find is 33 millimeter stack height in the heel and 23 up in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. And I would say that these are moderately firm, but not rigid. You still get some bounce, but they're really comfortable. They're flexible. And I found them to be really easy to pick up and run in. They're a very comfortable uh, daily training running shoe. About that, I got interrupted there when I was talking about the midsole ride at the Peg 39 when I was out at the track. So I thought I'd just finish it up here at home. For the midsole ride, now I think these are probably best suited for those easy middle distance runs. You know, I didn't really notice that second airbag so much in the heel area. Not as much as I thought that I might. So I was pretty excited when I heard that they added that extra airbag that it might get a little bit more of a wow factor but there really wasn't. These are simply a solid workhorse daily trainer that you can log just tons and tons of miles on pretty darn comfortably. And I think that's really where their niche is. Now, they're not a great speed day shoe, at least not in my opinion anyway, but you are able to pick up the pace. So where I think they might shine a little bit more for them. Now, I did run some intervals in them, so I'm speaking from experience that it was a little bit harder to pick up the pace when I was doing that speed work than it is and maybe some other quicker speed day shoes that I own. But if you wanted to use these, like I said, for easy middle distance runs and maybe turn it into a progression run where you pick up the pace toward the end, or maybe you want to run some fart licks uh, in these shoes, I think that they work really well for that. So let's take a look at the geometry of the midsole. Now here you can see that they're pretty traditional old school running style of midsole. You can just see how flat it is. There's not a real aggressive rocker up there in the forefoot of the shoe. So Nike's really relying on that 10 millimeter offset. So your heel setting off you know, 10 millimeters higher than your forefoot to give you that 
forward rolling feeling as you move through your gait, but it works. It works. It works really well. It's really smooth. Like I said, you know, these are pretty flexible shoes. So you get a lot of ground contact, but it's pretty natural as you move through your gait. And you can see that they do have a bit of a heel bevel here. Now they did change this a little bit. So it's kind of squared off here at the, in the uh, heel area, but you got that heel bevel that if you're a heel striker, you know, that now that airbag in the back in the heel area, if you are a heel striker, might feel much more comfortable. So uh, let me know if you guys run in the Pegasus 39 and you have that experience, um, you know, just how it's working out for you. But for me, the only time that I really noticed that airbag back in the heel is really when I was walking. When I was running, I didn't really notice it that much. So let's flip it over and you can see from the outsole that they have all of that racked foam is covered from heel all the way through to your toe. I would not be surprised if you're able to get four or 500 miles in these shoes. And that outsole does a really good job of keeping you tight to the road. You know, that pattern is somewhat of a diamond type of a pattern. And I think if you want to take these on some light trails, you'd be okay to do that as well. Certainly nothing technical, but oftentimes when I'm out at my state park, that's the kind of conditions that I have to run on. So I think these are a pretty versatile shoe that can go from light trail to road. So let's take a close look at the upper. Here they used an engineered mesh material. It's lightweight, it's durable, it's strong. There's lots of room up in the toe box to be able to splay my toes. And again, I ordered this shoe true to size and I had just about that thumbs width from my longest toe, which for me is my big toe to the end of the shoe. So it was a perfect fit that way. And it's really snug across the midfoot section of the shoe. I don't have a particularly wide foot and I felt like I was really locked in and secure across the midfoot. And that's in part because they went to a fly wire system or they went back to a fly wire system. So this isn't new for them. And the way that that works is they've got actually a couple layers of material here and those fly wires you can see on the inside there. Now they run between two pieces of material, the upper material, and they go all the way down and are sewed into the midsole. Basically band your feet in. And so you get a really tight, snug feeling across that midfoot. I really liked it. You're locked in and secure. You're not going anywhere. It was easy to get dialed in very, very quickly using that system. Now the tongue is pretty padded. You know, it's kind of probably more padding than what they really need, but it was comfortable and it's gusseted. So it's basically a part of that inner um, lining of the shoe. So it's, it's uh, I would say, lack of a better term, integrated into that uh, in first lining within the um, upper material. So it's not going anywhere. It's very comfortable. It's not quite a booty type of a construction, but it has a very nice, uh, comfortable slip in feel to the shoes. And then as we look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab, lots of padding there. This is a really comfortable shoe. I wouldn't say, you know, it's a, it's definitely not a max cushion shoe and it's not an overly plush shoe, but they've got more than enough there to keep me comfortable. I didn't have any kind of issues uh, around my ankle or on my Achilles. It all felt really good. And then on the, uh, on the heel counter, they have a slight Achilles heel flare that I found to be really comfortable. Now I didn't really run any shoes on any kind of uh, steep inclines or declines because sometimes that can be pretty telling in a shoe, but for the workouts that I took these out on, which was uh, some intervals and then I did a recovery run. So it's my, my experience in these isn't extensive. So I just want to make sure that I let you know that, but I will be running these a lot more and I'll bring you some additional further uh, reviews as I get more uh, testing in on them. I put a lot more miles in, but I found it to be very comfortable and a nice heel pocket. So that padding comes down quite a way. So it creates a nice solid heel pocket for your heel to set in. So I didn't have any heel slippage. I didn't feel like my heel was slipping out of that pocket at all. And as I turn, put it up on my shoulder and give it that pinch test, you know, there's quite a bit of structure back here uh, that adds a little bit of stability to the shoe. So overall, I'm really enjoying the Pegasus 39. You know, they're, they're not a max cushion shoe. So if that's your thing, don't buy these. But if you're looking for a solid workhorse daily trainer that you can log just tons and tons of miles on, have a little bit of ground contact feel, more, more than what I really expected to have. In previous Pegasus shoes, I felt that airbag a lot more, but in these, I, I didn't really feel that airbag as much. In previous versions of the shoe, I kind of felt like that airbag was setting so that my toes almost kind of wrapped around it to spring off. Here, I felt like maybe they moved it back just a little bit so it was more of a solid um, placement so that, you know, I, when I struck the ground, 
uh, it was more dispersing my impact than it was creating a way for me to push off or tow off. <laughs> but I found it to be really comfortable uh, to run in and a very natural feeling. I do think they're worth the $130 that they're asking for them. You'll definitely get your money's worth. In my rotation, they're gonna best fit in that middle distance run where I don't necessarily need to pick up the pace so much as just log some miles. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim. Yeah, I'm feeling kind.